Before we get into the tea, I have to expose a company, NordVPN. I've been using NordVPN to keep me safe while digging through the internet for receipts for over two years now, which is why I was super excited when they reached out and gave me a code for you guys to use. NordVPN.com slash tea spill gets you 68% off of a two-year plan and an additional month for absolutely free. The reason I really love using NordVPN is because it makes me feel so much more secure when I'm using public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're at the mall, in a cafe, or even at school on their Wi-Fi trying to catch up on the latest tea, or shopping online for your 50th nude eyeshadow palette. Well, if you're not using a VPN to protect your connection, all of your personal information is at risk of being exposed. When you use NordVPN, all of your internet data and personal information is kept safe behind a wall of protection. They also have a really great mobile app so you can stay safe on the go. I always assumed that VPNs would be so difficult to use, but Nord makes it really easy. They have over 5,300 servers in 59 different countries, so right now I'm in Canada and with just one click I can go to France and then I can jump down to New Zealand and make a quick stop in Australia. Which brings me to one of my favorite benefits of NordVPN more TV shows, and more movies. If you guys aren't using a VPN for your favorite streaming services like Disney Plus or Netflix, you're missing out on so many movies and shows from other countries. Since quarantine started, I think I've seen everything good to watch on the Canadian Disney Plus, so I jumped over to the UK and I couldn't believe how many options they had. I've even been able to watch certain YouTube videos that would normally be blocked in my country. If NordVPN sounds like something you'd be interested in, just head over to nordvpn.com slash teaspill or simply use code teaspill when checking out and you'll get 68% off of a two-year plan. This plan works out to be about $3.71 per month, so for the price of a coffee, you can protect yourself and watch so many great shows from all over the world. Signing up to NordVPN is also risk-free because if you decide it's not for you within 30 days, they'll give you a complete refund. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring this video and let's get into the tea. This week, Trisha Paytas seems to have started some drama. Are we surprised? No. But actually, I am surprised at her selection of influencers that she decided to drag. Trisha posted a podcast called Cancel Jaclyn Hill, Addison Rae, and Tana Mojo. Yeah, clearly Trisha is bored of her usual selection of Gabby, Hannah, and the vlog squad because this is just like, wow. I did not expect this at all. Anyways, Trisha starts off by dragging Jaclyn Hill. If you guys remember last year, Trisha and Jaclyn Hill's ex-husband John had a little like thing going on where they were all over each other on Instagram and people were genuinely confused. On one hand, it kind of seemed like Trisha was just trying to be a troll and stir the pot with Jaclyn, but then on the other hand, that doesn't make sense why John would agree to do it. Anyways, in the podcast, Trisha tells her sister that she reminds her of Jaclyn and her sister kind of laughs and almost says something shady, but she stops herself. But of course, Trisha is an open book and comes right on out and calls Jaclyn Hill a bitch. To me, she has been a bitch. She's talking <gasps> Apparently, the reason Trisha thinks Jaclyn Hill is a bitch is because Jaclyn told John that Jeffrey talked badly about Trisha and John being together. Trisha says Jeffrey called her and John trash, embarrassing, and disgusting. Oh my god! I don't really see why Trisha would be mad at Jacqueline for something that Jeffrey said, but okay. Trisha then goes on to talk about Jacqueline Hill's new boyfriend and calls his cooking channel embarrassing and admits that she hate watches it. She also comments on how Jacqueline met her new boyfriend, saying, John gets out of rehab, rehab and he just has a new boyfriend that was his best friend at the recording studio. studio. She also talks about how Jacqueline Hill always acts like the victim and only comes back online to promote things. Which is like, okay, tea, but we all knew that. Moving on to Tana Mojo. There isn't much tea here, just the fact that Trisha found Tana's apology video to be a huge joke. She played a clip for her sister who actually never saw the video before and she couldn't even tell what Tana was apologizing for. I think we can all agree that Tana's video was probably one of the worst YouTuber apology videos that we've ever seen. Trisha then goes on to try and drag Addison Rae and her mother. Trisha thinks it's really weird how involved Addison's mom is in her social media and life. She thinks it's weird her mom drops her off at parties and likes to stay and hang out with everyone and makes TikToks with 20 year olds. She also thinks it's weird that they have a podcast together and just the fact that Addison's mom is so overly involved in her life. 
Honestly though, I have to disagree. If you guys think about it, Addison was literally in school last year and now she's a multi-millionaire just from TikTok. If she can get her mom on social media too and literally make two careers from 60 second TikTok videos, then good for them. I don't think there's anything weird about your mom driving you somewhere when you're 20. I mean, it kind of reminds me of Kris Jenner. Everyone lives for how Kris is like a momager and manages all of her kids. I really don't see how this situation is any different. Do you guys think Trisha took things a bit too far in her podcast or are you just not surprised at anything that Trisha does anymore? Another week, another James Charles drama. Last week, we talked about Ethan from H3H3 calling James out for stealing his wife Ela's hoodie from Teddy Fresh. Ethan went on to release DMs, which showed James admit that the hoodies were pretty much the same and talked to Ethan in a very condescending tone. He pretty much said, okay, yeah, they're the same, too bad, what do you want me to do? James is still planning on releasing the collection anyways, posting pictures of the campaign photos showing a bunch of popular TikTokers in the hoodies. Well, James is now getting dragged by his very own fans. It became known that people have still yet to receive their sister's apparel merch from over four months ago. Over the summer, James released two collections. One was a tie-dye collection and the other was a limited edition butterfly collection. A lot of his fans have been waiting nearly five months with no updates on where their orders are. Here's what some people had to say. Ship out your orders from over a month ago before you worry about a new drop. Can you ship your Sisterland merch from four plus months ago instead of releasing new collections every week? Thanks. As you can see, a lot of his fans think it's kind of ridiculous that James is releasing more merch when his already paying customers have been waiting for so long for now old merch to come. Some people just want their money back because the merch is so old now, but apparently his customer service team isn't getting back to anyone. Ethan, who just got into some major drama with James over his new hoodie, threw some shade towards him, saying, Unlike James, you actually get the hoodie you pay for from Teddy Fresh. So do you guys think James should wait until everyone receives their merch to release more? Or do you think his fans should be more understanding since COVID has slowed mail delivery and production? We have an update on Tana Mojo and her horrible apology video that she posted a few weeks ago. Tana's video now has over 100,000 dislikes and she's been heavily criticized for how she acted in it. Her video had a jump cut every few seconds and it truly looked like she was reading from a script. We finally have an update because Tana posted an Instagram story this week saying she'd be posting an explanation video for the apology video. So like she's pretty much posting an apology video for her apology video. What's up guys? I thought I would hop on Snapchat and be sentimental for eight seconds, but um, I'm editing something for Tana Uncensored right now, doing a voiceover back on my YouTube editing grind and I'm so happy to finally be back doing this and as you guys know I took a very long break from YouTube just because I really felt like I wasn't in the mental place to be a person that everyone knows and loves and I really had to get back to that so I'm finally editing content again and this week I have a lot of YouTube videos coming one of them being addressing the response to my apology video about my life because I miss being on that level where you knew everything about my life and just gave you a really raw and honest life update and I'm sure it will arise a thousand more questions and a thousand more things but that's okay that's a part of this journey and this is the first step to getting that out there so that is coming ASAP do you guys think Tana deserves a second chance at an apology video or are you just over her completely this week, a YouTuber named Gabby DiMartino posted a TikTok video that a lot of people find really out of touch and just weird. She posted a TikTok with her friend called the Income Challenge. Now, I've never heard of this challenge before and I haven't seen anyone else do it, probably for a really good reason. Gabby pretty much is the rich one in the challenge and her friend is supposed to be the poor one. She admits she spends $9,000 a week, drives an insanely expensive car, and has a personal chef. Her friend, on the other hand, has an office job and spends like maybe $100 a week on groceries and drives a normal car. We have two completely different incomes, so we thought it would be funny to do this challenge. And I think this is really funny. I'm not bothered in any way. <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. I'm a secretary. Here we go. About $9,000 a week. Like $50 to $100 a week. <laughs> $350 to $400 a week for a personal chef. 50 on groceries. $1,500 mortgage. Not bad. Mine's 1200 so apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Aviator 2020. Kia Rio 2013. 
Prada. Michael Kors. Yeah. <laughs> Neiman Marcus, Burberry, and Bath and Body Works. <laughs> Forever 21! Woo. Gabby instantly got so much backlash from this TikTok. Gloating about the difference with your income versus your much poorer friend is the weirdest, most vapid, shallow flex I've ever been unfortunate enough to witness tonight. Social media is making the next generation so brainless about what's important. This ain't it. She knows damn well this is not a challenge. Just say you wanted to humiliate your friend and go. Gabby went on to post a video apologizing for the TikTok and claims she over-exaggerated how much she spends. She claims she spends $9,000 a week because she employs a bunch of people, including all of her friends. Do you guys think the TikTok shows how out of touch with reality some huge YouTubers are? Or do you think she has every right to talk about how much money she spends? This week, E! News posted an article titled YouTube star Tati Westbrook's LA home could be yours for $4 million. The article says the house has five bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a gourmet kitchen, a movie theater, a pool, and a guest house. Last year, Tati got involved with a lot of drama with Jeffree Star, James Charles, and Shane Dawson. After the drama from her Bye Sisters video died down, Tati actually moved out of Los Angeles and headed to Seattle. She posts on Instagram in December saying, There's no place like home. Seattle, I'm back and I'm here to stay. It seems like Tati was telling the truth. She truly may be in Seattle to stay and is leaving LA behind for good. I honestly wouldn't blame her because from everything I see online, LA seems like a place that's nice to visit for a weekend, but not somewhere good to live long term, especially for YouTubers. Tati has been silent on all her social media since posting her Breaking My Silence video over two months ago. That video ended up causing a lot of drama, so it's unclear if she's ever coming back to her channel at all. Do you guys think Tati is settling down in Seattle and leaving her social media behind for good? Or do you think she'll be back one day?